Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Buckeye Piper. Enjoying the cool North Carolina morning on the uh, patio with my buddy Bo. Enjoying some Michigan cherry coffee. Bo's enjoying whining over there if you can hear him. 673 Savin Alley Series 3 9 millimeter with Sun Bear. Sun Bear's really become one of my morning smokes. Really good. Like the honey and I like the, the, the spiciness. Mild spiciness. Today I thought I'd uh, go chapter two in the book that I was that I've finished reading and that some of you have talked to me about and may or may not be reading with me, which is great if you are, and if not, that's cool too. But it's extreme ownership. It's uh, written by Jocko Willenick and Leif Babin. About the seals in Ramadi. And I think I said the title is Extreme Ownership, but chapter two, chapter two, I want to talk a little bit about today and relate some of my experiences. No bad teams, only bad leaders. Think about that. There are no bad teams, only bad leaders. I would equate that to fruit. And if you take a piece of rotten fruit or moldy fruit and you put it in a bowl of good fruit, that one moldy piece of fruit will rot and mold the rest of the bowl. Same thing's true in leadership. But I wanted to read just a quick excerpt from the book that struck me as, as being what this means, what this chapter means. And when leaders who epitomize extreme ownership drive their teams to achieve a higher standard of performance, they must recognize when it comes to standards as a leader, it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. And this is the book, by the way. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. And I'm going to take that a step further today. What you tolerate becomes what you teach. So what you preach, it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. What you tolerate it becomes what you teach. What you teach becomes your culture. So if you allow things to slide and that becomes tolerable to you, Bo's trying to get in the house, if that becomes tolerable to you, tolerable to you Essentially, you're teaching that that's okay, even though you may be preaching a different message. It's what you teach, not what you preach. What you teach becomes your standard, your reality, and your culture. So a long time ago, when I was a young, young, young leader, I had the pleasure for working with for a general manager. He was fantastic. I worked for him in two buildings. Did a startup with him in one building. He's now... Bo, knock it off. He's now um, there's a senior vice president or executive vice president for Sam's Club. One of them. He's done a great job through his career. But the little message tidbit he told me, he pulled me aside one day. And this has stuck with me for oh, 20 plus years. And the message was, John, it's always about leadership. And he expanded on that. He said, I could take a good leader 
and put them in the worst performing team in the building, that team will turn around. I could take a poor leader and put them with the best performing team in the building and within months they'll run it into the ground. Now I've seen this over and over in my career. So why do you tolerate that poor performing leader? At some point you can't, you know, <clears throat> not to jump ahead or behind in the book, but the book really talks about five things. You explain the mission. I think I've talked about this before. Make sure the people have the training and the capacity to do the job. You remove the obstacles. You hold them accountable for the performance. And number five is if they never improve through mentoring, teaching, training, development, then you, then you terminate and fire them. And that sounds callous, but if you don't, then you keep that rotten piece of fruit in your bowl, and that sounds extreme, right? People aren't rotten pieces of fruit. I'm just using this as an analogy. You keep that rotten piece of fruit in your bowl, it's going to ruin your whole bowl of fruit. It just is. There are no questions about it. That's just how life works. Leadership is the same way. There are no bad leaders, no bad teams, only bad leaders. So think about that. Think about that as you go through the day or as you go through the week this week or wherever life takes you, whatever position you're in. Um, again, this applies not just to business world. This applies to the home. This applies to civic organizations. It applies to anything you may be involved in. It's not what you preach. It's what you tolerate. Buckeye taking that a step further, what you tolerate, you teach. What you teach becomes your culture. So I just want to share that message today. And uh, that was chapter two in the book. If you haven't picked up the book or if you're interested in leadership at all, I know some of my leadership videos get great watches and great feedback. So, meh. So, just something I enjoy doing. You know, it's just something I like. If zero people watch, I'll still do them because it helps me talk through things and helps me apply what I'm learning in my head. And if it helps anybody out there, even one person, then it's worth it, in my opinion. If you haven't read the book, and I'm on the second book, I'm reading The Dichotomy of Leadership by the same, the same authors. And Jocko has a podcast too, by the way, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. The podcasts are pretty long, man. He'll get two or three hours on some of those podcasts. But I like the quick shorts on YouTube. He's got a lot of six, seven minute videos that are pretty powerful. Check him out. But that's the message for today, folks. No bad teams, only bad leaders. And to reinforce that, it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. What you tolerate becomes what you teach. What you teach becomes your culture. So essentially, you as the leader, what you tolerate, that's what you get. The old saying, uh, you make your bed, you lay in it, kind of applies there too, right? How, how are you going to make your bed? I'm not going to ramble on, folks. Tell me what you think. Drop it below deck. Uh, if you want to read along in the book with me, again, I've finished it. I'm probably going to go back through it again. I'm going to take my team at work through it, too. It's a fantastic read. Um, and it's a fantastic read because it really talks a lot about the seals, and it gives a great story. Then it talks about the principle. Then it talks about how to apply it to business. And, again, you can apply it to life, not just business. But uh, anyhow, wishing y'all the best, pay it forward, wishing y'all the blessings in the world.
Y'all have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Take care.